video, I'm going to walk you through how to use something like ChatGPT to generate code for you, um, specifically looking at doing data analysis coding. So here you can see I've just come to a new chat with ChatGPT. And so there's two different ways that I'm going to show you how to generate this code. Um, and it depends on your familiarity or um, level of experience with different programming languages. Let's say I'm working on data analysis to write a research article, and I want to generate specific code in R to generate a figure. And I don't know ggplot that well, um, and I want to be able to have ChatGPT generate that code for me really easily. So the general structure that you always want to do whenever working with ChatGPT to, to generate code is give it the input and then the output or what you're wanting the output to be. And then you can add in any caveats that you have with that. And so if you always start with that structure, I'm not just telling it the output, but telling it what's your input, what's your output, and then what your language is as well. You always want to include what language and what packages in the language. So we're gonna start with the input and you don't have to have this input colon here. It's just a way for you to structure your thing. So you can say, I have a data set um, that has three columns. We're gonna say species, weight and height in it. Okay, so we have a data set that has three different columns, species, weight and height. What's the output? I want to create a graph that has species on the X column and then, and I'm gonna specifically say bar graph. Again, being as specific as possible is going to help you get better results with something like ChatGPT. So I wanna create a bar graph that has species on the X column and then shows the mean, mean on the, this should be axis, X axis, and then shows mean on the Y axis with error bars representing the standard deviation of the mean. So this is fairly simple. I wanna create a bar graph that has species on the X axis, and then it shows the mean on the Y axis with the error bars representing the standard deviation of the mean. And so then I'm gonna ask in what packages. So can you write the code for this using R and ggplot2? So again, this is, you do have to know kind of base R, which is why I have an entire um, course currently going on. Um, I'll leave the link to that in the description below, but that entire course helps you understand the basics of R so that when you are coming in here, you know the words to use to generate these, um, to generate code, but also you know how to kind of troubleshoot it because ChatGPT is not always going to be accurate in the code it produces. So I'm going to submit this, okay. So it's giving me the code here. So it's saying I need to load in the library ggplot2. Obviously, that's going to be necessary. I would load in tidyverse, which includes ggplot2 in it. And then I have the summary of the data. So I'm saying data, um, I'm grouping by the species, and then I'm summarizing by the mean weight, um, the standard deviation of the weight. And it went ahead and did mean height and standard deviation of the height, even though I didn't ask for it. But that is good to have. You have the summary of all the data, so you don't have to create a new one for weight and a new one for height. So this would work. Um, and then we create a bar graph with error bars. So ggplot, the data is going to be this summary data right here. Um, so obviously, whatever my data is named, I need to change that in here. If my if any of my columns are named differently, I would need to change that as well. So we have our data equals the summary data, and then AES sets up the aesthetics of the actual um, plot. So our x-axis is going to be species, and our y-axis is going to be mean weight here. So that's the column we're pulling the data from. We create a bar graph, and so the stat is identity, that's right. And so this is going, this fill blue, we didn't tell it to do, but it's going to make them all blue um, bar graphs uh, instead of like a different color or black or gray is typically the default one. And then we're going to add error bars in. So the minimum value of the error bar is going to be the mean weight minus the standard deviation, and the max value is going to be the mean weight plus the standard deviation. So that's how we're gonna go above and below the um, top of that bar graph. 
This is controlling the width of that um, error bar and this is position. And so this is interesting because it's having position dodge. This is what you would do if you had a grouped bar graph. Um, I wouldn't put this in for this. It might still work. I've never tried it, but you don't need it for what we're doing. We're not grouping our bar graph. Um, so that's a little bit interesting that they have that in there. And then they're giving the um, labels. So they've given a title label, an X axis label, and a Y axis label. So this should work. This down here that's commented out, if you wanna include the mean heights of the same one, you would do this. This doesn't even really make sense because all you're doing is adding the error bars here. I would just create a whole new um, graph if you're gonna do mean heights and mean weights, not add them to the same graph. But overall, this would work minus this particular code right here, but it is giving us some things that we didn't ask for. So we can always alter this. So we can say like, can you alter the code, make the color of the bar graph change by species? So here what we did is it has X is species, but also fill is species, which is what you want. Um, it's still going to have your X axis is still going to be species, but then whenever you have um, the fill, the fill is going to change based off the species. So each species is going to have a different color there. And then down here, it added in this scale fill manual um, to be rainbow. So here it's going to pull different like hex codes based off of the rainbow colors. If you wanted specific codes in here, you would have to put in the specific codes that you want for it to be the colors that you want. This is a general way to be able to create that graph is to do input and then output and then do it. And it does a pretty good job. Now, if I started a new chat and I said, in our, I want a graph that shows weight by species, right? I'm not following that structure. I'm just telling it what I want. And so let's see what it is. So it's gonna create a data frame here. It's gonna give me ggplot2. Um, it's going to create a bar graph. So it's species and then weight. And see, this is saying stat equals identity. Um, so what you're going to get is basically a bar for every single row that you have. It's not averaging it together or anything like that. And then it's giving you your title or your labels. Again, this is saying it's in kilogram. You can see that again, this would work. It would create something, but that is not anywhere near what we would want it to be um, for an actual graph that we're doing. So that's why using a structure of what do you have, what do you want, and being really specific about what you want, where do you want it, all of those things, um, and then giving it the um, language and any packages you wanted to specifically use is going to end up giving you much better code in the long run. Now, the other way I wanna show you how to do something, this is something I do a lot because I bounce back and forth between doing like SQL, Python, and R for my job. And sometimes I forget exactly how to write, I know how to write it in one thing, but I don't know how to write it in another. And this is something ChatGPT is really, really good at. If you want to um, have something written, you're, you're working in Python, but you know how to write it in R and you can't remember how to write it in Python, you can do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this area right here and I'm gonna create a new chat. And I'm gonna say, can you translate the below code from R to Python? And I'm gonna go ahead and tell it the packages I want it to use. So I'm gonna say using pandas. Um, and then I'm gonna paste that code in and press enter. So here it's importing in the pandas library. It's giving a summary of the data and it's saying data um, grouped by the species. And then this is an aggregation function. So we're gonna aggregate those different things. And then we're gonna reset the index. That is exactly how I would do it.
this is a really good way if you are writing in one language or you know a language really well, you're trying to get ChatGPT to code in a different language that you don't know as well. A lot of times if you know how to do it in one language, it's going to be more efficient to go ahead and have ChatGPT translate that information to the different language than to try and follow that same structure of input, output, um, and then telling it the language and packages just because it's going to be a lot clearer and knows how to recode and then redo it. You can also do this for like, if you know SQL, um, I could say, can you translate this, the below code from SQL to R? And then I'm just gonna write some code real quick. So I'm gonna say select, uh, let's do ID weight height from, and then we're gonna do, let's just say data set, where this is a filtering command in SQL. So we're gonna say where ID is greater than 100 and weight is not null. So they're using dplyr, that's what I would use. So this is a data set. And then we're filtering where the ID is greater than 100 and the weight is not null or is not in A, is not missing. Um, and then select ID, weight, and height. Yep, that's exactly how I would do it. Um, so that is really the two main ways that I would use ChatGPT to generate code for data analysis. I will leave a few other ways that I would use ChatGPT on the screen. And I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.